Hi, here I would like to share with you some uh, prob problem solving techniques for uh, first year physics, in particular in mechanics. Uh, first, uh, it's a good idea to identify what is known, so the variables that are given in the text, then identify clearly what is uh, asked by the problem, so it could be variables or some equations, then find some relations or equations between what you know and what is asked or wanted. And this can be done using known tools. So what are your tools in mechanics? First your mechanics, it's kinematics, Newton's laws, and conservation laws. So typically conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. So this can be uh, summarized here. You have the known variables, wanted variables. Then you look at available tools to connect the two and find the appropriate uh, equations. Then it's just mathematics. You solve the equations. So the difficult part is to identify which equation uh, will be able to solve your problem. The rest is math. Example. So this is taken from uh, the book Fundamentals of Physics, uh, ninth edition, from uh, Halliday, Resnick, uh, Walker, chapter 10. In, in, it is a solved problem in the text, in the chapter. Okay, so we have here uh, a uniform disk, shown here, mass, great, uh, capital M, so we m is given, r is given, the radius, the small mass uh, here is given. So what is known is m, r, m, and then find the acceleration of the falling block, the angular acceleration of the disk, and the tension in the core. So that's three things. They want a, alpha, t. So your uh, mathematical instinct tells you that if you have three unknown variables, you need three equations. So sometimes you can find them sequentially, but in general you will need three equations to solve. But when it's done, it's just mathematics. So the big problem in physics is finding these three equations here. Okay, so what equation can we choose? We have a, alpha and c. So a will appear, uh, a is the acceleration of the block. So we can use, uh, a good idea is to use uh, Newton's second law in linear motion applied to this block, because we also have t. t is applied here. So of course we have gravity also. So a good idea is to start with Newton's second law on the block. Uh, second, we have alpha here. So if you remember, alpha would show up in Newton's second law for rotation for the disk. So then we will apply uh, Newton's second law for the disk. So this will bring us two equations. Okay, let, let's start with, with this. We need to identify the forces uh, uh, on, on this block and the torques on the disk. So taking the block first, we have the force of gravity and the tension. So let's deal with first this. We, uh, we write a Newton's second law for the block. So we take an axis that is uh, uh, an axis uh, like this and positive uh, going up. Okay, so in such case T is positive mg is negative, equal m. So this is our first equation. Okay, let's now look at the disk. We have only one force on it. Uh, one force that will produce a torque about point O. Of course we have also some uh, reaction here, but this uh, the, the gravity and reaction all both goes through the axis of rotation, so they will produce no torque. So only T produces the torque. So, 
we apply Newton's law on the disk, we have tau net equal i alpha. Um, so i is it's a, it's a disk. So this you can look up this in tables. It is half of m r squared. This is i alpha. So the only difficulty here is to find out the torque, and in particular its sign. So the magnitude is r t. Uh, r so r and t are perpendicular here. So just r t. And here we have minus because the convention we stick to the convention. So Uh, positive torques are torques that tend to produce a counterclockwise rotation, but this force uh, tends to produce a clockwise force, a uh, clockwise motion. So we have a minus here. Okay, so that's our second equation. So we are still unable to solve so for the three variables t, a, and alpha, so we need a third equation. So here, notice that we have so far considered uh, the block and the disk. We have not looked at the rope itself. The rope actually connects the disk and the block. So in fact, each point on that rope e experiences the same acceleration as the block. Therefore, here you have an acceleration, A, which turns out to be the tangential acceleration of this uh, disk. And so we can express the tangential acceleration as a function of uh, alpha uh, the for this disk. So in fact it is relating angular variables and linear variables. So we have AT equal R alpha equal A. So that's our third equation. Okay, so the rest is mathematics, so I leave you as an exercise. It is not uh, very imp interesting for us. So the important thing, an important <laughs> interesting thing was how to find the equation and why we chose these equations. I hope it helps. Thank you for your attention.